All right, by now you've heard about the staggering number of big lie candidates who were on the ballot this midterm election. By NBC News's count, 268 election liars, deniers, and doubters ran for governor, secretary of state, senate, and house of representatives this year. The big lie in Trump's attempt to subvert the 2020 election hinged in part on the election officials, usually the secretaries of state, whose responsibility it was to uh, make election rules and certify vote tallies. We just spoke to Nevada's next secretary of state, Cisco Aguilar. His victory means that every election liar running for a top election a position in a battleground state lost. Not in all states, but in a battleground state. There was one victor in Indiana. The most dangerous of these big lie promoters were defeated. We can all uh, allow ourselves, uh, as I mentioned, a sigh of relief at those victories, but not a deep breath in. The threat to democracy remains critical. According to NBC, at least 167 Republican candidates who have cast doubt on the 2020 election did win their races. And yesterday on the show, I spoke with the historian Joanne Freeman, who offered this insight and warning about what comes next. This is not a moment to let down our guard, because I think when you look over the long haul of American history and you look at um, really fraught uh, elections or elections where it felt as though there was kind of a turning point at hand, it's always interesting to see what happens after the election. What do the people do who expected to win, who felt entitled to win? What is it that they do when they don't get what they feel entitled to? And they already are prone to not necessarily being cozy with the democratic system. How are we not cozy with the democratic system? This is America. Get cozy, people. Joining us now is Jocelyn Benson, the Democratic Secretary of State of Michigan. She just won her re-election against a Republican candidate who pushed election lies. She and her uh, running team all actually won. So did their abortion ballot measure. Uh, so did their state legislature, House and Senate. Secretary Benson, thank you for uh, being with us. Congratulations on your victory. You have been such a great friend to this show in our discussions about democracy. Um, and. I, I guess we have to start with a congratulations to the American voter. They stepped into the breach. They decided they were actually warriors for democracy, not voters in a midterm election. Yeah, exactly. This is a victory, not just for democracy, but for voters who clearly and unequivocally said across the aisle, even Republicans, independents, they rejected those who sought to use these offices to further their own agenda. And in doing so, they really squelched this idea, voters did, that it should be a political strategy to try to deny the results of an election. And, and so it wasn't lost on me that soon after our election, you saw two major candidates concede after they had lost, which also really underscored that this is a losing strategy to try to disrupt democracy. And voters clearly and unequivocally stated that on Tuesday. And you have been talking to me about this for some time, that voters are not idiots. Um, Secretaries of state want safe votes. You don't want anything hanging on you about a bad uh, election. You like audits, in fact. You think elections should be audited. You think rules should be reviewed. Except all of that happened after 2020, particularly in your state. So you are able to say to people, and you were able to message in this election to Michigan voters, the voting is safe. The counting is safe. And your vote matters. Ultimately, the message to People, if they understand voting is safe, is that my vote counts. Exactly, yeah. The real strategy here behind the attacks on democracy is to get people to stop believing in the power of their voice. And what's so beautiful about this election is that voters said, no, we do have power, and let us show you how. And that's really what democracy is all about. And it's a, that's why it's such a significant defeat to those who've been trying to undermine democracy and spread lies about fraud, knowing that our elections are safe and secure. Voters said, no, we looked at the data, we looked at the facts, and we're going to stand with the professionals who protect our voices and protect our votes. And one of the things you were able to do in Michigan, because Michigan is going to go down as the case study of this election, because you had everything happen to you in Michigan, voter challenges, bipartisan stuff, fake electors, a kidnapping attempt on your on your governor, um, an actual abortion question, one of the five that were on the ballot. You had it all. And when you and I spoke three weeks ago when I was in Michigan, we had Republicans who were telling me that they 
were not aligned with what their Republican statewide candidates, the, the, the views that they held both on abortion and on elections. In fact, the Republican, the head of the Republican Party in, in uh, Michigan put out this remarkable statement in which he basically said the quality of our candidates was the problem. We, we, you can't win elections with people who are such outliers to, to voters who actually believe both in democracy and in, in, in the protection of, of, of rights as it related to your state, which was, infl uh, uh, was abortion. Yeah, I mean, voters want people, leaders, who will tell them the truth, who will rely on facts and data to make decisions that further their interests. And that's what I've done as Secretary of State, reforming our DMV to make it work for everyone. And that's what I've done as the chief election officer. And also, importantly, as you mentioned, voters, by showing up to vote in our election, couldn't just elect, weren't just electing candidates that furthered their values. They were actually making a statement on a policy with the ballot initiatives to enshrine Roe, to enshrine the fundamental right to vote in our state constitution. So that was a pivotal factor as well, particularly for young voters and others who, who showed up in record numbers. We had the highest turnout midterm ever in our state. But even that proposal three that won, when I spoke to Republicans while I was in Michigan about that, many of them said to me, but, you know, the reason I don't want to support this is because this, it's got this provision by which uh, children can have uh, uh, gender-changing surgery without their parents' consent. That's just not true. It wasn't there. So even that, what, something you can just pull up on your phone and read was subject to misinformation. That worries me, that, that the work's not done. People are so prone to listening to lies. Well, yeah, and though they rejected the lies and the liars in this election, they have not gone away. And falsehoods and misinformation is still prevalent, not just in Michigan, but in states around the country. And so while voters did hold accountable at the ballot box, those who've tried to gain power through lies, the liars haven't necessarily gone away. And we'll see next week whether, you know, the former liar in chief, the former president, Donald Trump, whether he gets back into the fray, because that was also a factor in past elections where liars were empowered. Uh, here in 2022, the fact checkers, the truth tellers were empowered and we won. But voters need to keep showing up to ensure that we can keep winning on the truth, not on the lies, especially as we careen towards the 2024 presidential election, which is right around the corner. Jocelyn Benson, thanks again uh, for always joining us to have this remarkably important discussion. Congratulations on your reelection. Jocelyn Benson is the Secretary of State of Michigan.